Um, so, so definitely there was a lot of inspiration from, from genetics themselves. Were there certain animals or creatures that you kind of loaned from for the, the creation of Dren? Well, I, you know, again, sort of echoing this whole mythological element, I always thought of Dren as a genetically engineered angel. So, mm. so she was always going to have a kind of bird component to her, and she was always intended to have wings, and there was always going to be something delicate and beautiful about her, which, again, is where this movie departs from Frankenstein because Frankenstein's monster is, was always going to be grotesque mm -hmm. because he's made from dead tissue. Whereas I thought Dren should really be something that's higher up on the evolutionary ladder and something, you know, maybe that's more beautiful than a human being. And um, so th that was one component. And, uh, and then really it wasn't sort of her physiology that I borrowed so much from nature, but just more her behavior and the way she moved. And, um, and also the way we designed Ginger and Fred, taking into account the way real animal hybrids um, are composed and what they would be used for in, in a lab environment. I mean, the reason Clive and Elsa are doing this experiment <clears throat> is not so much to make bizarre creatures, but so that they can make creatures that produce certain chemicals that can then be used um, by a pharmaceutical corporation for uh, drugs. So there's a very, re and this is all real. This is, I mean, they make animal-human hybrids in the UK. That's been legalized for the last three or four years specifically with that intent to, you know, cure certain genetic diseases like Alzheimer's and None of them that they've been having sex with, I hope. <laughs> well, that we know of. That we know yeah, of. The, the British can be very odd. That's true. Mm. And that's definitely true. Case.